Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I'm announcing a creative challenge for all of us as a community. So what I want to do with this challenge is I want to encourage you all to create something. A work of art, a painting, a craft, a text, an article, a short story, a video. Something that encourages and pushes you to get out there and share of yourself and express yourself. So the goal of this challenge is Meraki. Meraki is a Greek term and it represents authenticity and it represents creativity. It means labor of love. It means putting your heart and soul into something. So what I want you to do is using the team A New World to design or describe a new world or a new place or a new environment where your feelings, your values, your opinions, your principles would be different. Where you would feel differently, where things would be different, where the world would work differently and where you, as a result, would be a different person. I want you to use this challenge for creative self-exploration. So you're going to be exploring yourself and you can use the tools in Jungian psychology to do this. You can investigate your personality type. You can investigate other people and book characters and fictional characters. And you can think of yourself in this new scenario or this new environment. So you have to put yourself into this work somehow. You have to describe something in this book that is you. And that is authentically you. A part or a core part of yourself. The goal of this challenge is that we will get in as many submissions as possible. So I really encourage as many people as possible to participate in this. Share and uh, post your content, your work, your articles, your videos. And then once we have all that out there, what I want you all to do is I want you to analyze this work. What does this mean? How can we understand that in a person? How can we see that in a personality type? How can we understand this from a Jungian perspective? Just like dream analysis, we're going to do story analysis. So we're going to be discussing these articles. I'm going to be discussing these articles and stories and the things that you send out in future videos from the perspective of what feelings do these things evoke in me, how do I understand this, what values do I see in this, what uh, important core concepts or archetypes do I see in this story or this picture or in this work. So the more deep you can go into this, the better. It's not about making it perfect, it's not about making sure the story is the best story out ever, it's not about uh, perfectionism, it's not about making sure everything is exact or correct or grammatically right, it's not about making sure the painting is beautiful, it's about making sure it's you, that it's your story, that it's your picture, that it's your work that comes out there. So it has to challenge you to explore yourself. And because I know so many creatives out there struggle with creative per perfectionism, writer's block and everything, we have a community that can help and support you to make this happen. Meraki means labor of love and it also could mean that you have to try to love and be kind to what you do. You have to show kindness to your own work. You have to treat it as your baby, as a part or extension of yourself and you have to love it because who else will? You have to really try to understand yourself. Why did I write this? Why did I put this phrase here? Why did I use this expression? Where does this come from? Because often this can tell you something about yourself. So hopefully what this will do is it will help you understand yourself a little better. That's the point at least, to help you all understand yourself a little bit better. I hope this challenge is going to push all of you in the right direction and I hope this is going to be great for the channel. To organize all this content, I encourage you all to visit the new subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash Eric Dorr. There you can post a link to your own article or work or video and you can write it as the monthly re re writing submission, so the monthly creative submission. I chose this um, new topic in this new direction because I felt the flow approach and the study of flow, although interesting, was not enough. I needed an outlet for myself and for my enormous creativity. Uh, honestly, when I don't create, I feel depressed. That's uh, 
how core it is to me to make something. And if I can't create something authentic to me, if I can't do something I love or show myself or talk or create something that fits with my values and my interests, I can't feel satisfied with my work. So what this made me realize was uh, first, I'm not a creative perfectionist like I thought I was. It's not that I'm seeking perfection in my work. It's that I'm seeking to be authentic in my work. So that that was a big reframe for me and it taught me something about myself. It's not that I'm held back because I can't write something that is me, uh, that is perfect. It's that I can't write something that is me. It's that I can't discuss theories or values or feelings or stories that speak to my interests. and fantasy and fiction and writing is such a big and huge interest in my life and it's something I haven't explored here on YouTube before. Now what I want to do is I want to share my story. My story is a story about elements, four elements that clash against each other's. Four elements that represent different personalities, and we can speculate about which personalities these four are. Still, four different characters that we can all clearly recognize, and uh, I hope you're gonna like it. Now, imagine a world ruled by elements and gods and divine forces. In today's story, we're using everything we've learned about personality psychology to build a world of archetypes and examples that can help us understand different psychological concepts. In the world, there are four elements, Ketek, representing mass, and his twin brother, Drac, symbolizing force and power, Lapis, representing liquid, and Mera, representing air and vapor and gas. Those are the four elements that make up life, and throughout all of time, Drac has ambitiously been seeking dominion over all of life in the world. Ambitious and resourceful, Drac would push, manipulate and drive the other ele elements against each other, tearing their bonds apart, hoping that he would eventually become the master of all. However, despite his will and his enormous power, Mera was always wise enough to see through his intentions. Lapis was always able to forgive and let go, and Ketek would always hold calm and steady. All born on the same day, from the mother of all, Aeternos, they would all join together to celebrate their birthday together in the warmest day of summer. No matter how heated the conflict might get, they would all still show up and let their conflict go for one day as best as they could, for they knew otherwise they would upset Lapis. Lapis Loving and kind wanted nothing but for the twins to get along. She did their best to surprise them with thoughtful gifts and words of encouragement. She really deeply admired Drac's spirit, but struggled with his anger and intensity. She adored the intellect of Mira, but sometimes felt cut, cut off from her sometimes cold and detached mind. And she respected Ketek, but struggled with his stubborn and uncompromising nature. Lapis had one principal need in life, to feel unity and connection. No matter how bad things got, she never lost hope that things could get better between the four. The birthday party was her chance to put things right between the four elementals, and so she cooked and prepared and did everything to put things right for the party. Late in the evening, the day before the party, she was joined by Ketek. You should not have to do all this hard work alone, he said, deciding to give her a hand. But don't you think it's pointless? Drac has gone too far. He will never reconcile. He can be taught, a voice sounded be behind them. It was Mira's thoughtful voice that they heard. I have a plan, she said, a plan that will make him understand. On this fateful day, Three of the four twins had come together, <laughs> or should I say quadruplets, had come together with a plan to stop Drac from his futile attempts to sow tension. Working together, they had built a special new element, 
Calamis. Calamis was harder than diamond and could not be moved or pushed. It was Ketek's proud cre uh, creation built together with the power and energy of Lapis and Mira. Ketek proudly showed it off to Drac, but Drac did not let himself be amused. I can rip and tear and break this new element apart, he bellowed confidently. Not even Aternus herself could do such a thing, Mira said thoughtfully, yet with a hint of curiosity to see what would happen next. Drac did not have the patience to wait, however. He charged at Calamis with all that he had. He shouted and screamed and pushed and burned, but Calamis was still and lifeless as an automaton. Made by all other elements, he had still to be given the blessing of life by Drac. The others laughed as he supposed, but Drac was not about to give up. He could simply not stand the thought of losing his face in front of the other elementals. If I am to break Calamis, he said, would you all admit me as the rightful king to rule and lead you all, he said. The others smiled at this. The plan was all coming along. Kitek was the first to accept, arrogant and always so sure of himself. Lapis went back and forth a few times, weighing her options. Mira answered in riddles as always, but the intention was clear. You will take your place as the highest and brightest star of us all, she said. So for many years, Strack developed a new hobby, charging and pushing and throwing himself at Kalami's lifeless, unyielding substance. He did not see it at first, but over time his powers had begun to weaken. He was no longer as hot as he used to, no longer as strong as he was known to be. The people of the world were first happy, speaking of milder summers, less fierce storm and less war and conflict in the world. But over time people be did begin to miss the power of Drac. The winters had grown colder, food more sparse, and even the sun herself seemed less generous. The three t twins came together to Drac to stage an intervention. It's over Drac, you are powerful, sure. But power can't accomplish anything on its own. Won't you let this silly feud go? Lapis pleaded with him, tears in, his, in her eyes, but to no avail. Drac might not have his power, but he was as passionate and ambitious as always. Yelling at the others, his face grew red. He swore at the others, speaking bloodthirsty of revenge. He accused them of cheating. He explained that he would never give up. And in one last, desperate swoop, he poured all his energy and power into one massive burst of flame, completely enveloping Calamis. Angry, enraged, he would not stop spouting flames and violently kept going until there was nothing in him left to give. Falling to the ground, he panted, waiting for the smoke to rise. Now, surely the problem must have been solved. Calamis must be gone. He even began to crack a smile. He had won at last, he felt, assuredly. He was interrupted, however, by fate, and they all heard a big earthquake shake the world. It was Calamis, whose eyes had begun to burn flaming red. The panic was clear in all their eyes. None had seen anything like this before. It seemed that Drac's extreme will had rubbed off on him. He made an evil grin, and then disappeared into nothing. Is that not Mira's power of invisibility, Mira said, pointing at Calamis, now gone. Mira nodded. They were all startled. None knew what was going to befall them now. It seemed that they had unleashed something bigger than all of them, but none of them knew where Calamis had gone. While the change was slow at first, the world had begun to change around them. New mountain change grew from underneath the oceans, creating new land. New forms of life began to appear, first just simple plants and trees, then small critters, and later big, complex animals. The old elements grew increasingly threatened, but all chose to handle the situation differently. Mira had disappeared, but the sky was full of clouds. You could see her thinking, planning and strategizing. Lapis worryingly drifted from beach to beach, confused about what to do next.
Kitek buried himself deep underneath the ground, hoping nobody would be able to touch him from there. Drac did his best to burn away at any trace of Kalamis, but was never able to find the original body. And that was the beginning of the new world. I hope you all enjoyed this story and uh, that this is going to be an amazing project. Uh, if you're curious, you can already go and take the test to figure out if you are Architect, if you are Mera, if you are Lapis, or if you are Drac. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this, what uh, type you are, and what uh, video or article you want to write. Let me know if you have any ideas or if you're stuck on something and I'll try my best to help. And of course we have a great community out there that will probably want to help you as well. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.